isolated by sheer mountain peaks. This stunning microworld is a stage upon which scientists discovered surprising connections between different species. To fully understand the key to the rich complexity of life in Yellowstone today, we must look at how the presence of one animal can affect that of another. At the very top of the food chain in Yellowstone is an iconic predator, the wolf. The park is currently home to 98 wolves in 10 packs. These survive by hunting the herds of large grazing mammals. At the other end of the spectrum is a humble tree-felling rodent. The beaver. On the face of it, wolves and beavers live very independent lives. And there appears to be no connection between them. So it came as a surprise to find that their fates were somehow intertwined. This was discovered after the National Parks and Wildlife Service launched a landmark project to return wolves to Yellowstone. Wolves were absent from the park for 70 years. They were eradicated as part of a predator control campaign aimed at protecting livestock. But in 1995, 31 wolves were released in a last-ditch effort to save the species from extinction in the wild. The releases were surrounded with controversy. Some parties claimed that wolves would unleash devastation upon valuable stocks of America's rare grazing mammals. Somebody knocking on my door. What was to happen was even more remarkable. Soon after the reintroduction of wolves, Yellowstone's rivers took a turn for the better. Flows improved, fish spawned more successfully, and numbers of water birds increased. This improvement in river habitat was down to the tireless work of beavers. Beaver dams are key to rich wetlands. As well as providing habitat for fish, birds and other animals, their precious reserves of water improve flows through the dry summers and remove sediments. The timing of the beaver's return was too closely linked with that of the wolf to be a coincidence. So what is the link between wolves and beavers? How are their lives interconnected? <laughs> 